All right, now this is a magical device. Battery isolators. So a battery isolator for an alternator is perfect. Because what it does is you take it as an input, and then from there, it's sort of like a gate valve, a Y valve. And then it sends it to both the engine battery and to the unswitched distribution to go back to the house. And you could have one input going to three places. In the past, this device used to exist, by the way. It's existed for 30 years. But it was horrible. Why? It was made of diodes. And for this level of automation, you would probably lose about 70%, 60% of your alternator output. Now that is a massive cost. That's like me saying, oh, you got two bank accounts that you want to deposit money in? No problem, I'm your middleman. I'm gonna take a reasonable cut, 70% of your income, and I will distribute it evenly to whatever bank accounts you need. And literally, no joke, thousands upon thousands, it's probably hundreds of thousands of boats have battery isolators with diode combiners. And the reason was, what's the alternative? Have an owner start moving switches to figure out where things are gonna go? They're like, well, that's gonna go awful. So they're like, well, screw it. We're, you know what, that's the only choice we have? Let's go with automation. And they literally would put in diode combiners on boats, and I have buckets of them on boat that we take off, and we replace them with FET, the modern version, which is like 99% efficient. I can live with a cost to do a transaction to regulate which battery is gonna get a charge for my alternator if it costs me only a 1%. But a 70%, 60% cut of my alternator output so that I can have automation, that's a little steep. So when you're looking at getting one of those, Mastervolt makes them, um, there's a bunch of companies, the ones we use all the time are Victron. You can have one to three, one to two, and you'll literally have one alternator recharging maybe your house, your engine, and a thruster bank. And the banks will never see each other, right? So there's never this problem when one battery bank is completely empty and the other one needs a charge. Because the thing what's great about it is the alternator is limited. It can only ever output 120, 140. So you'll never have nuisance tripping of the fuses. That's why I like about it. The operator doesn't need to be involved. This device is the one that I collect for paperweights. And that is on, if you have a boat from the 80s or 90s, even 2000, because a lot of people building boats even in 2000 are just set in their ways and they just do what they've always done they ended up putting this. Those fins are ways to dissipate heat. So it can tell you how hot this thing gets. And that's, that energy loss is your alternator output that you're losing. So if you have a diode combiner that looks like that, the FET combiner is like $200, $300. It's a no-brainer. No-brainer. Like in boat bucks, no-brainer. You take that out, your alternator now, I've got boats where we design boats, suddenly the alternator, without doing anything to the alternator, not changing the wire, not doing anything, outputs three times what it used to output by just changing that device. Because you don't lose two thirds of the output, you have full output, it's 99% efficient. That's why I love those things. So make sure when you buy one that you choose one that has the correct amperage because they're gonna say, well how much is your alternator gonna output? Is it gonna be outputting 100 amps, 200 amps? You gotta figure that out. And um, this one is really nice too, the Victron. That's the one we use all the time. This is sort of like Tibbetts fusing, you know, make sure you choose the right wire size. And so now on a lot of boats where the battery banks are uneven, and that's kind of commonplace because small engine battery, huge house bank, we'll put that right in the middle, like the alternator. Alternator output goes to that device, that device goes to the battery banks, and this is easy, breezy, it just works, and there's no nuisance tripping. Question in the back? Are they still selling those old ones? Believe it or not, yeah. Because people that, you know, I, I'm gonna be one day like that. I'm gonna be set in my ways, and I'm not gonna be learning. And I'll be like, oh, this thing is the best, and there's gonna be something new, and I'm gonna be like, no, oh, that's crap. How do you deal with the batteries when you're taking uh, the shore power? How do you charge um, I, well, so yeah, so on my boat, I have an echo charge for that, a small echo charge on my boat. And I, to be honest, the question was, how do I charge my battery banks? Because this only solves the alternator. I love multiple output chargers. Like when I'm designing an electrical system, most boats, most boats, I'll end up, because most boats have more than two batteries, 
I'm gonna go, okay, if you've got engine batteries or a generator, I'm gonna put a small 30 amp, 40 amp, dedicated small charger for those. And then I'll have an inverter charger on the house. Yeah. Sorry, this, only Th this only works from the alternator, right? It's only an alternating output, right? So if you have fuel cell and solar. This will not allow current. This is only a way to distribute alternator power. Now, the thing is, sounds bad, but let me go here. What, what it means, though, and I'm wondering if I have it. Yeah, let's go back to here. At the end of the day, though, your house batteries, they're really only one thing that needs constant love, right? Like your engine battery, once you start and you refill it for 15 seconds, it's fine. If your engine battery is what it is, which is just to start the engine. So you don't necessarily need to worry about what's your EFOI doing and all these different things. It's how do I get an alternator to recharge my house? That's really more the issue. It's not how does my methanol fuel cell recharge my engine battery? Your engine battery, you generally don't worry about because if you've wired it only to start engine, the engine's gonna run, charge the battery, and you'll be fine. So fuel cells, solar panels, all these things are generally all worried about the house, right? The house is what you worry about because that's your checking account. That's the one that gets drawn out all the time. Your saving accounts, not so much. The question up front was, well, how do you maintain it at shore power? Like, just to maintain it. I do that with an echo charge, but you could also put a simple, like on a dedicated five amp charger, a trickle charger. Right, because your engine battery is not meant to ever cycle down to 50% or anything like that. It goes from full to 99% to full again. So any questions on uh, FET combiners or battery isolators? Other than I love them. So would you use an isolator with the combiner? You could, you could, it's possible. This is a way to solve the alternator problem. Listen, I could, no joke, Lisa was asking me, could I do this for how long? I could go for 24, 48, I am so crazy passionate about this stuff. I could do a 12 hour marathon on combiners and tell you that there's combiners that only look at polarity on one side and then, oh my God, and you can disconnect and when you, like it is awesome. But I was reminded earlier, this is supposed to be an introduction, somewhat normal level. So I'm not going too deep. It is possible, and we do install combiners with isolators. Yes, absolutely. There is an application for that. There is. Any other questions on battery isolators? Will it overcharge your uh, starter battery? Uh, no, not at all. No, no, no. It's whatever the alternator is outputting. It doesn't regulate voltage, right? It puts things in parallel effectively. So if your alternator is overcharging the battery, yes. This does not stop current. It just lets it through. It's sort of like a... The way I was thinking about it, explaining sometimes, is imagine you have a faucet that hits the middle divider between two sinks, right? The faucet flows, hits the divider, goes on either side. And the sinks are always even. So it's up and down? No, not necessarily. If one has a big hole in the bottom, meaning you're draining a lot, more is going to go on that side. They're going to keep them about even. Just, I, in trying to figure out the whole picture, I hadn't asked about the combiner before, but. So if you were to use a combiner to combine your house bank and your start engine, uh, you, and let's say on a rare situation you had to use it for a lot for starting, it's way down. The combiner uh, won't regulate itself below a certain amperage, it'll trip the field, or fuse? No, yeah, no. Uh, I understand what you're saying. I think that's an offline question. Okay. We could go in a rabbit hole on that one. Okay. I'm gonna hold that one for a little bit later. Um, yeah, I'm gonna, there, yeah, that could be a rabbit hole one. So we're not gonna go there. Sorry, I just don't wanna go there on that one. Any other questions?